Welcome back. In this series, we're going to show how to adjust the uh, set up the tail of the T Rex and set up the gyro. All right. So the first step in doing that is getting the mechanics correct um, with the servo. And just like we did with our servos and our for our cyclic, we want to find a horn that that goes on the servo and is 90 degrees to the servo case. Best way to do that is just go ahead and plug the. This is an HS56 on the tail here, by the way. So the best way to do that is to plug the the tail servo into the rudder channel, channel four on Futaba, and go ahead and uh, find. Let the servo center, make sure on the radio that you have the trim centered on rudder, there's no sub trim on rudder, everything's at 100% ATVs, just like we've gone over before. Go ahead and find your, 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 your wheel that best fits mechanically, so that you're 90. And what I, what I found on the HS56 is this star wheel here is the best, and you use that inner hole. You want to get this ball as close to the center of the servo output shaft as possible. That gives you the, the best amount of resolution for controlling the tail. If you go too far out here, you're going to wind up bringing your ATV or your, your gyro, um, excuse me, not your ATVs, but your gyro uh, end down, and you lose the resolution. So that's the best bet. So now that we're 90, and we got a ball link on there, and we get it set up 90, the other thing you want to make sure is that your servo is aligned so that this tail push rod is in a, is in a straight shot down the tail. As you see, straight shot down the tail. All right. So now we want to position the servo um, on the boom so that when the servo is at 90, when the servo is at 90, center position, that the tail pitch slider is in the center of travel. Let me get it over here. Is in the center of travel between the hub and the tail case. As you can see, we're pretty close to the center there. Now we can. Tweak this mechanically later when we start adjusting the gyro um, range or limit setting pot. Um, but basically, we want to be able to get full deflection in both directions on the tail pitch slider. Okay? So, that is the first step to get everything mechanically set up. So, go ahead and do that. Get all your settings mechanically set up. So, again, when the arm's at 90, the tail pitch slider is in the center of travel uh, between the hub and the tail case. All right? When we come back, we'll go ahead and hook the servo up to the gyro, show you how to hook up the gyro, and, uh, and how to s then set the uh, limit. And we'll be back. Okay, a little gyro 101 on the 401 gyro here, so maybe we could call it a little gyro 401. <laughs> anyway, I, I want to go through this so you completely understand how the Futaba gyro works and what the gain channel is for. If you look at the... If you look at the Futaba 401, it has two leads that go to the receiver. One lead has, you know, this this bluish green, red, and black, and that is the signal for the rudder. And the other lead has this single yellow wire, and this is the gain signal. Now on Futaba, you hook that on channel five. Other radios, I'm not sure. I think JR's gain, uh, Aux One or or Gear or something like that. But how this gain tells what the gyro what to do is what is important here so you understand the difference between heading hold mode and standard mode and how much gain in each, okay? So a little, little 401 here. If we take the channel that's controlling the gain, again in channel 5 on Futaba, and we look at a complete channel range, we have 100% and 100% on the, uh, on the end points. And of course right in the middle, you could call zero. Um, percent or zeros for center center of the channel. So on an aux channel or channel five, uh, you can program your radio to swing in this direction or swing in this direction. And you usually put that on a switch. Now when I go through the radio settings for the Futaba, Futaba has a nice gyro menu that makes setting this up easy. But other radios, you're going to have to set endpoints, and I'll tell you why. Depending on, let's say in this direction is heading hold mode and this direction is standard mode. It's got a right upside down here. Hey, not bad. Okay, as you, in, as you head this direction, you increase gain in heading hold, and as you go this direction, you increase gain in standard mode. So when you set up a switch for, say, your aux channel, uh, uh, this one flip of the switch causes the, the radio to move the, the kind of like moving a stick, kind of like moving a stick on the radio. If I move the stick this way, I move in this direction. If I move the stick in this direction, 
it's moving in this direction. Well, programming in an aux channel on a switch, basically when you flip the switch, it goes all the way to 100% here. You flip the switch the other way, it goes all the way to 100% here. Well, obviously, we don't want to be driving our gyro with 100% endpoints. So what you're going to do is you're going to send, set your endpoint down to be the proper amount of gain for each of these directions. Now, usually I don't tell people to set up a gyro in standard mode. Basically run heading hold all the time. It's your best bet. Don't mess with standard mode because then you got to mess with revo mixing and a bunch of other stuff. Heading, a 401 gyro in heading hold mode is the best darn thing you'll, you could do to your heli as far as gyros go. Okay, so where do we, about do we want to be on here? Well, if I, if I bring my endpoint down to, say, 32, okay, 32, that basically is saying I'm, I've got 32% gain into the, into the gyro for heading hold mode. If I bring this endpoint down to 32, right and upside down, 32, then I, I've got 32% gain in this direction for standard mode. So what you want to do on your radio, uh, and when I show you this on the, on the, foro, on the Futaba, you'll see how easy it is. Um, um, but what you want to do on your radio is you want to now go in, find the channel that's going to be driving your gain wire, and go ahead and for now set up endpoints at about 50% for now. So, so bring this endpoint down to 50 and bring this endpoint down to 50. Program it for a switch so when you flip the switch it goes all the way to 50 here and all the way to 50 here. Okay, And then what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to set your limit on your gyro because we'll need to go into standard mode to set the limit. If it's in heading hold mode, it's very difficult to set the limit, if not impossible, because the, when you move the stick, the gyro doesn't move exactly like you would expect it. So it's best to be in standard mode to set your gyro limit, and the gyro limit is a potentiometer on the gyro here, and set your gyro limit so you don't get servo binding and overdrive the, uh, the pitch slider. Okay, so that's a little gyro 401 smack down there. And uh, hopefully it made sense to y'all. Uh, and we'll come back and go ahead and set our limits. Okay, for you Futaba users, the next step is we're going to go into the gyro menu and set up the gyro menu to work with the 401. So we go in there. And what you'll see is, um, whoops. What you'll want, want to go to first is you want to go in and turn on the gyro so it's not inhibited. And then go down. I like to set the gyro switch to switch E, uh, the upper right corner here, which is usual, which is your idle up switch. So that's normal, idle one, idle two. And so we want to set that to switch E. That's the way I like it. You can put it on another switch if you want, um, but I like to put it on there, and I'll show you why in a minute. And then we want to set our mode. For, we don't. We we can use standard if you want, but I like to use the the GY mode because it gives you. Uh, an indication of whether you're setting for um, heading hold or normal. So we go ahead and set that to GY mode, then we go to the next menu, there's another page here, and you can see your percents. Now it always defaults to N for normal and 50%, and but we don't want to be in normal, so what we want to do is reduce this percent to, down to zero, and then it'll flip to the other side, and it'll put an A there, and we'll go, we can go ahead and set up our gain. So in order to get our endpoints, we first need to get the radio. So I'm, I'm going to say put in about 32% gain for now. This was where your start. This is probably where your first hover, uh, the helicopter. And you can bring this up or down as needed when we go into the flying tips and, and how to set up the bird in the first hover. So set it for 32 right now and do that for each switch position. All right. For each, so basically do it for each switch position. Now we're going to leave, for now we're going to, I'm sorry, for this switch position, which is idle 2, we're going to leave that in normal at 50, and I'll show you why in a minute. After we're done with that step, we'll come back and we'll uh, uh, go ahead and set that to 32 as well uh, for uh, AVCS or heading hold mode. Okay? Okay, the next step is making sure we have our reversing in the radio for the gain channel set correctly. So how do we know that? Well, we went into the gyro menu as I showed and we set 32% uh, with an A for AVCS, meaning heading hold. So the way the 401 works is when you initialize the gyro, if it's in heading hold mode, the light will come steady once the gyro initializes. So we'll go ahead and power up and we'll watch that LED 
and the gyro just initialized, and guess what? It's blinking. We're not in heading hold up mode. What that means is we need to go reverse the channel, channel 5, which is the gain channel again. We need to go reverse that in the radio, so when we do plug it in, we go into heading hold mode. So I'll go in, reverse it. Okay, now we should be reversed. And remember we had our gyro menu set for heading hold 32%, so when I initialize the gyro, I should get a solid light this time. There we go, I'm now in heading hold mode for the gyro. Okay, so now we've got our direction and channel 5 set correctly, and we know we're working. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you recall in the gyro menu, I said to leave this position in normal mode, the switch position. So this would be switch the E switch all the way forward and watch what happens to my LED when I go into that normal mode basically turns off the gyro I've now turned off the gyro that's what that does so this is where we want to set our endpoints now our excuse me not our endpoints our limit potentiometer on the gyro so that we don't overdrive the gyro the, uh, the servo so we're going to go back to our tail here and I'm going to take my non ferocious or plastic screwdriver and we're going to adjust this limit pot right here, and adjust this limit pot so when I move the stick in one full direction, it does not bind. So I'm going to move the rudder stick all the way over. As you can see, it's hitting. Okay, the best thing to do is turn it down until you watch the tail pitch slider come off the hub, just like that. Then turn it back up until it's almost touching the hub, and that's full deflection. Now check the direction in the other way. And if you had your pitch slider center, uh, you shouldn't bind in either direction. If you're binding in one direction, not the other, you need to go back to your servo here and move it on the boom so that you, you don't bind in both directions and you get full deflection. So basically that's it. We now have set our limit potentiometer for our gyro uh, uh, and, and turned it down so we don't have binding in the tail. So that step is complete. And when we come back, we're going to check gyro direction and, and fi finish the gain setup so when we're ready to fly we have some gain in the gyro. Okay, the next step is to set the direction for rudder so that we're, we're flying correctly. Now, I know some people who actually fly the, the normal way to set up the direction of the tail is so when you make a right turn you're moving both sticks to the right so you're putting right rudder in and right aileron to make a right turn but I, that's called flying the nose. That means you're flying the nose of the helicopter. Now there's some people who fly the tail of the helicopter. What that means is when they make a right turn, they're moving the sticks in opposite directions. And a left turn, they're moving the stick in an opposite direction. Uh, I, if you're new to helis, I would say learn to fly this way. But I do know a few people who fly the other way. Very odd the first time I saw that. I almost crashed someone, another guy's heli because he didn't tell me he, he flew the tail. So what that means is by flying the nose, is when I give aileron to turn right, I'm also going to put rudder in and it's going to turn the nose to the right as the, if the helicopter's tail's pointing toward me, it's going to turn the nose. So I'm going to put it at your angle so the helicopter is flying away from you. You put right aileron and you want the nose, when you give right rudder, the nose to go right of the helicopter, okay? So that's the way we're going to set up. So how do you check that? Well pretty simple. Let's go ahead and look at the tail and look at the tail blades and basically actually you don't have to look at the tail blades, look at the tail pitch slider. Remember you gotta put the tail together properly. Now the way that what that means is the blades rotate up into the downwash of the main rotor. So when the main rotor is turning the correct distance this is the direction the tail rotates in. Blades come up through the downwash of the rotor. That way you know you've got your tail turning the right direction. So how do we make sure that our a right turn uh, uh, with rudder, or a right rudder input puts it in, we go right, and the way you tell is the pitch slider will go toward the case. Toward the case means that you will get the tail moving to the left, actually, but the nose moving to the right, okay? So that'll be in that direction. Check, you can check the other direction, obviously that's going to be correct too, okay? If that's backwards, you go into your radio and you change channel 4 which is the rudder on Futaba and reverse that and if you do do that by the way go and double check your 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 um, limit to make sure you're not binding on the reverse uh, just double check it okay so that's how you get the tail going in the proper direction
Okay, next step on the gyro. Now we want to check. If you look on the gyro, there's two switches. And by the way, I forgot to cover this in the beginning. If you're not using a digital servo, this DS switch should be off. If not, you will burn up your servo if it's not a digital servo. If you're using a digital servo like, say, a Futaba 9650 or the Airtronics 94761, then you can go ahead and put this into digital mode, get, get you a higher frame rate, frame rate faster uh, tail response from the gyro. Okay, sorry about not covering that in the beginning. But there's also a DIR, that's for direction, reverse and normal. Now what, this, what that switch does is not the direction the stick moves the tail, it's the direction that the gyro is going to compensate whenever, it gets a, whenever the tail tries to move on its own without stick input. So we need to make sure that's set right. Well, how do you tell that? Well, it's very similar to how we set up. We'll go ahead and we'll move our rudder stick and try and get that uh, slider in the center. And then what you do is move the tail toward you. All right? And what should happen when I do that is the gyro should move the tail pitch slider away from me. Okay? And what's happening here is, if you look, is the tail pitch slider is moving toward the direction I'm moving the tail. We don't want that. We want the tail pitch slider to go the other way. So what we would do, and go ahead, you're going to go turn off your gyro to do this. Turn off the radio, go in, and set that little dip, dip switch direction to the other direction. Okay? And actually, I prefer you would use the little plastic screwdriver they give you with the gyro rather than an X-Acto knife. But anyway, so I've reversed that. Okay, we go ahead and power up the system again. Wait till the gyro initializes. By the way, that's something important. For a heading hold gyro, don't put any stick input in from the radio or move the heli until that light comes on solid and initializes. If you do, the gyro won't be initialized properly. So before you go fly, uh, when you plug in your battery pack, don't move the heli, don't move the radio, any sticks on the radio until that gyro goes into lock, heading lock, and that means it's initialized and it knows where center of everything is. Okay, so we reversed our switch, and here we go again. I'm going to go ahead and move the rudder stick to get that pitch slider in the center. Now when I move the tail toward me, the pitch slider is moving away, okay? So that's what we want. Move the tail toward me, the pitch slider moved away from me. If I move the tail away from me, the pitch slider moves toward, toward me. Basically, that will get your tail running in the proper direction. If you don't have, if you didn't set this up right, the first time you go to lift up off the ground, and the gyro is reversed, it's going to feel the tail move, and it's going to give in the input, and it's going to move it even faster the other direction. You'll go into crazy pirouetting right, right above the ground because your gyro is reversed. Okay, so basically that is it. That is how you set up a GY401 with a Futaba radio, and basically you're done. Now, again, if you remember, in the gyro menu, I said, let's set it to 32%. And actually, I'm, I've increased that to 60%. And I'm going to do the same with all the channels. Uh, in this particular radio, because of the, the normal and the ABCS, um, it's 60%. I'm remembering my old 9C radio, not the 9C Super, where this worked slightly differently. And usually, I was running around 32%. So I'm going to go ahead and set these to about 60 and this will be our initial spot for, um, for uh, uh, our first hover. And by the way, you can now take the third switch position and take it. You don't need the normal anymore. So we'll just go ahead and put that into ABCS and bring that up to 60 as well. Okay, that way when you change from normal mode to idle up 1 to idle up 2, if you're going to use an idle up 2, your, your gyro is all the same. Again, I, I, I like to set it to switch E. You can set it to another switch on the radio if you don't want to fool with that. All right, so basically that covers setting up a, a GY401 with a Futaba radio. Now, if you don't have a Futaba radio, back to my little drawing here, what you're going to want to do for your gain and your direction of the channel that's managing the gain on Futaba, it's channel 5, is you're going to want to go find that channel, set your endpoints. I go ahead and set, you know, in the 60 there, same kind of range, somewhere between here, about 60%. You could go 50, like I said. When you power up the gyro, if the gyro does not light does not turn solid it means you need to reverse your channel or flip the switch you've programmed so you're over here unplug the gyro plug it back in let it initialize and the light should come on so basically on other radios that's what you're gonna have to do you're gonna have to set endpoints to get your proper amount of gain okay that covers it I hope this video was helpful to you and enjoy